Okay, awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to our app ideation workshop. And this workshop is all about starting your congressional app challenge project. So my name is Natalia. I'm one of the workshop leads in the alumni advisory board. Yeah, and this is the, an alumni advisory board event. It's our first event of the season and we have many more workshops coming up. So stay tuned, but we're so happy to have you for our first event and we hope that you learned something new today. And if you haven't done so, please fill out the, um, the check-in form and also drop in chat what's your name and what's your favorite app. Okay, awesome, let's get started. Okay, so our, our agenda for today is that first we're going to be going over an overview of the Congressional App Challenge. Then we'll be talking about how applications and software are developed through a process called the Software Development Lifecycle. And then we'll be focusing on the first stage of the life cycle, which is the planning stage. And there I'll be talking about design thinking principles and we're kind of be, um, we'll have an interactive activity all about ideating app ideas. And then finally, I'll go over some next steps that you guys can, uh, you guys can move forward with your congressional app challenge project. Okay, again, if you haven't done so, please fill out the, please fill out the check-in form. I will drop that in chat one more time. That would uh, let me copy that. There you go. Okay, awesome. And then I'll hand it off to Joe so he can talk about what the Congressional App Challenge is. All right. Thanks, Natalia. Um, my name is Joe. I am the program director here at the Congressional App Challenge. Uh, we're so excited uh, to have the alumni advisory board uh, this year helping us uh, not just uh, do student outreach and assist with House of Code, but also help us um, with the student education process. And so this is really exciting doing the first workshop of the year. As Natalia said, uh, we're expecting many more. Uh, really excited about uh, what her and her team are gonna create for the year ahead um, on the workshop front. So um, I am the director of the Congressional App Challenge. Uh, I work uh, in Washington, DC alongside Congress to make the Congressional App Challenge possible uh, along with our team here. Congressional App Challenge is uh, a coding competition, uh, but really it's a series of concurrently, um, concurrent coding competitions taking place in congressional districts across the country. It's an official function of the United States House of Representatives that's written into the rule books. And each year, members of Congress opt in to host coding competitions, app challenges within their district, all at the same time, all across the country. This year, we have 333 members of Congress, uh, which is more than 75% of the House of Representatives hosting congressional app challenges in their district. So the likelihood is your member of Congress is hosting a congressional app challenge this year. Um, and if not, there's still a little bit of time left for them to sign up. Uh, so hopefully we can get a few more offices in uh, before all is said and done. Um, we do have members from all 50 states hosting, uh, which is a first for this year too, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, this is our seventh year and we've served 35,000 students through the first six years. Really excited about what's gonna be ahead this year. Um, for you guys, uh, hopefully you've already registered. Um, if you haven't registered for the Congressional App Challenge yet, you can do so uh, through our website uh, on our student registration page. And submissions are due by November 1st of this year. So you've got until November 1st to sign up, complete your application, fill out your app, uh, and make a video for, the, uh, for your app. So um, in terms of requirements, um, students uh, must be enrolled in middle or high school uh, during the application deadline. Uh, so, no, so on November 1st, must be enrolled in middle or high school. You can participate in teams of up to four students. And so you can have a team, um, but 50% of the team must live or attend school in the district that you're competing in. So that means if you're a team of four, uh, two of the students must either live or attend school in the district that you are participating in. Uh, apps can be coded on any platform uh, using any coding language um, and there's no theme so you can code on any topic um, something that really moves you something you're passionate about so anything at all that you're interested in coding on is eligible for the app challenge um, so with that if you have any questions feel free to let us our team know um, but i will turn it back to natalia awesome thank you so much joe okay now we'll get on with the meat of the of our workshop so first we'll be talking about the software development life cycle so as you guys have dropped in chat, your favorite app. So kind of think about your favorite app. So an app can be anything that is, can be a mobile app. It could be a website. It could be a game, um, a desktop app, just any sort of application or computer software that's considered an app. And so think about that app. So have you ever wondered how exactly it came to be, how it was created? So what is like, how were they able to come up with the design of the app? Why does it have certain features? And how does the app work? What coding languages were used to create it? And how does the app function? It functions very smoothly and it's there's no like bugs or like mishaps. So most likely the people behind uh, 
the team that developed the app, the people behind the app, they followed the software development lifecycle in order to create and build the app. So the software development lifecycle is a process used by software industry to design, develop, and test high quality software. And it consists of these six steps, planning, design, software, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Yeah, consists of these steps and we'll be going over each one. So the first one is obviously you need an app idea. So the planning stage is all about brainstorming what, uh, brainstorming an app idea. So uh, usually how this goes about is that you have a group of people and then you have a topic and then you kind of want to identify any problems that these group of people have with the topic. And then based on identifying those problems, we can uh, kind of ideate numerous technical solutions to uh, that really solve the problem. And then from there, now that we have our app ideas, we can develop a list of features and requirements that the app will include. And, the, and we have to ensure that those features really solve the problem at hand as well. And then once, oh, my bad. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, think about Instagram. So can any of you guys list out uh, the features of Instagram? So what are the kinds of things you can do on Instagram? Feel free to drop it in chat. So we know that Instagram is a photo sharing app. It's a very popular social media. Awesome, yeah. So the main thing about Instagram is that you can share pictures. You can post pictures uh, to, to others. Yeah, you can message between different uh, users within Instagram. They have a DM feature. Any other Instagram features that, um, that are in the app? Exactly, so you can interact with those pictures by commenting, liking, and sharing the posts. Okay, awesome, great job, guys. Yeah, so some of the, yeah, so pretty much all of you guys have listed all these features. Another thing is that you can follow other accounts and you can also create your own account, whether that be logging in or signing up. Okay, awesome. So now that you have the list of features, that's when you can actually design the app and build that visual representation of the app. So you wanna focus on developing the user interface of the app, which is basically how the app is used, uh, how the app looks like. And you also wanna develop the user experience. So how is the app structured and what is the user's experience when they actually use the app? So some of the things to think about in this stage is we want to uh, create a clear picture of what we want the app to look like. We want to think about the logic and the behavior of the different components in the app. We want to think about the number of pages in the app and how those different pages interact between each other. So the goal of creating this visual representation is to kind of like correct any misconceptions about the app, um, add any clarifications about the look and functionality of the app, and just ensure that uh, everyone is kind of on the same page about the product. Okay, so when you start designing the app, you uh, designing an app, you first wanna go with like a low fidelity prototype. A prototype is kind of like a wireframe that kind of layouts how the app will look like. So this is a prototype for a website. So as you can see, it just focuses on the general layout and kind of like the general concept of the app you're designing. So this is a low fidelity prototype. So you want to really test the crucial elements uh, such as like the interactions on the components in the page and like the navigation of the page. So for instance, we have this like search feature in, in the Yelp page where the user can type in a restaurant, they can add in a location and they can search and that will take them to another page that will show them the search results. So these are all things that you kind of want to think about in a low fidelity prototype. Just focus on the general layout and the general interactions between, between the um, between the different, uh, between the user and the application. So it's recommended that you get uh, feedback at this stage so you can just easily incorporate uh, the feedback into this really uh, low bare bone prototype. And then from there, we have a high fidelity prototype. So can anyone uh, point out the differences you see between the low fidelity prototype and the high fidelity, fidelity prototype? Feel free to drop those thoughts in chat. So what are the differences between this one and this one. Exactly, it has images. See, the first one doesn't have images, second one has images. Yeah, it has CSS or like a color scheme. It has actual styling built into the high fidelity prototype. Exactly, so the high fidelity prototype, we want, to, we want it to resemble most closely to the final product so that everything is in place when it's time to code. Yeah, great job. Thank you for your contributions, guys. 
Okay, so this is uh, another prototype, except it's with a mobile app. So as you can see, this is actually kind of like uh, a paper prototype where the where um, the designer actually draws in those components and makes those components by hand. So this is something that you guys can actually do. So over here is like a digital prototype where you use some type of tool in order to build it. And over here is like a paper prototype where you create it by hand. So this is how an app would look like in a low fidelity. And this is how a mobile app would look like in a high fidelity. So as you can see, everything's a lot more polished and it looks like the final product. Okay, so third is when we actually develop the app, the application. So there are tons of different programming language that allow you to develop tons of different applications. So for web development, you can start out with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or you could, uh, if you want something a little bit more complex, you can go on to React, which is a component library. And then for mobile app development, if you want to create an iOS app, you can use Swift. If you want to create an Android app, you can use Java. And if you want to create apps that work on both platforms, both iOS and Android, you can check out React Native. And also there's tons of other uh, different types of development that you guys can consider for your projects. So you have game development and desktop app development. Okay, so fourth is when we want to test our app. So now that we build our app, we want to make sure that everything is functioning properly and it actually provides uh, the benefit that you guys, uh, that you identified uh, in, the, in the beginning stages to your users. So there's many different types of testing you can do for your app. So you can do like safety or security testing, just making sure that the user, uh, the info that you, um, that the app is using is really protected or like the database that the app is stored in is protected. Uh, you also have beta testing. So this is where you release your app to a small set of users, and then you actually walk them through the app and have them use the app. And then from there, you can get really detailed and involved feedback based on uh, the way that they use the app and the, the thoughts they have on your app. And then second, we have, uh, and then third, we have a uh, user interface testing. So this is the process where we actually test out the visual components of the app and we validate whether it actually performs as we want it to. So for instance, an example is where we have um, this Google form. So over here, we have some text. Over here, we have a text input. So we want to make sure that that's working properly. Over here, we have buttons that uh, indicate if you click on it or not. So you want to make sure that's working properly. Yeah, so think of like those visual um, elements that you can interact with in um, a website. In terms of testing these, we want to make sure that it works as it's supposed to. Okay, and finally is compatibility testing. So for websites, we want to make sure it works on different browsers like Safari, Internet Explorer, and Firefox. And for mobile, we want to make sure that the screens actually account for the different phone sizes. Okay, a second. Okay, there we go. And then finally is when we actually launch our app. So in terms of a website, in order to launch a website, first you want a URL, which is kind of like the address of the website, the way that you can, uh, what you type in in Google so that you can actually get to the website. And so the key is that you want to make it uh, very easy to remember so people can easily find your website. And then second is that we want the website to be hosted on a web server. A web server is where a web server allows you to store the files of your app and it makes it available online. So you want to choose uh, um, the host of, uh, you want to consider uh, who you want to host the website and their like plans behind hosting the website since that will cost money. And then finally, we have uh, launching a mobile um, app. So in order to launch a mobile app, you usually publish this to the app stores. And you have to make sure that uh, the app is in compliance with the rules and regulations of the app store. And for Apple, I know that they have an approval process that you have to go through. So uh, just keep that in mind as you're developing the app if you do want it to get published. Okay, and then another thing we wanna consider is how do we get people to download and install our app now that it's launched? So we found that uh, a lot of people discover apps outside of the app stores, whether it be uh, through family and friends, through search engines, through um, ads on social media. So when you launch your app, you also want to consider having a marketing campaign that um, kind of uh, that, that kind of complements the launch so that you can ensure that people will be using the app and you can also just uh, because you want users in the app, right? So, and uh, this will also provide them a way to, I guess, like persuade them to download your app by really showcasing the value that your app can provide them. So some uh, ways that uh, apps kind of market themselves is Headspace, a meditation app. They post regularly on social media, um, all about meditation content. And so the content that they post is uh, very related to the app. So, 
And another thing that they do is that they utilize Instagram stories effectively and Instagram, and they do this daily. So they are very active in terms of marketing their app. And of course you can use ads, whether that shows up on YouTube, uh, social media, and then you can also have influ influencers uh, kind of post about your app and that shows credibility of your app. And another interesting way of marketing your app is that we have this, um, so you can use your app store page you want to make sure your app store page is very polished and clean and it shows kind of the key features that uh, of how your app works. So as you can see with DoorDash, DoorDash really, um, DoorDash really has a visually uh, pleasing um, screenshots that really uh, show how the app works. And it also has a good description that kind of uh, makes it easy to understand and kind of persuades the user to download the app. And then finally, we have the maintenance of the app. So when the app, when the product is in full operation or users are in the app, we wanna make sure that it's a smooth experience when the user uses the app. So we have to make sure we actually maintain the software, whether it be through software upgrades, repairs, bug fixes, and we just wanna monitor the performance of the app so uh, to ensure that it's doing what it's supposed to. And alongside of that, we continue our app promotion efforts. So overall, the software development lifecycle is really a cycle. It, it doesn't really stop at the end of maintaining the app. It, it always continues. And a good example of this is Instagram. So when Instagram first launched, this is how it looked like. And obviously, it, it, it looks very, uh, obviously, a lot has changed. So um, so think about uh, like a new feature such as Instagram stories. So Instagram stories wasn't originally in this first uh, in this first version of Instagram. So in order to I guess implement new features such as Instagram stories, they have to go through the software development lifecycle again. In the requirements and planning process, they have to plan new features and then they design, implement, test, and maintain that. So really, it's it's an evolution. You want to keep improving your app, keep adding new features, so that your users will so that you can maximize the benefit that your users will have in that. Yeah, so that's the software development lifecycle, and this is what's used in industry and uh, developing apps professionally. Okay, so first we'll be focusing on the first stage, which is uh, the planning stage. So can you guys drop in chat what you guys believe is the purpose of technology? So technology has made its way to, um, uh, has incorporated itself into our daily lives, whether we shop, how we shop, how we work, how we uh, learn, how we live. So what do you guys feel like is the purpose of technology? What makes it so beneficial to our lives? Feel free to drop your thoughts in chat. Exactly, to make people's lives easier. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. So it's really to make people's lives easier, uh, make things more efficient. Exactly, exactly. So when you think about it, the purpose of technology is really to solve our problems. So uh, based on, so think about the wheel. So the wheel is kind of considered one of the most fundamental and uh, important inventions and in technologies at all time, because if it weren't for the wheel, then we wouldn't have transportation, we wouldn't have like um, the machine, we wouldn't have machines, we wouldn't have like agriculture. So when you think about it, technology is made to kind of make things a lot more easier for us. With the wheel, we're able to transport things a lot easier. With, um, with social media, we're able to uh, connect with others that we wouldn't be able to meet within our local communities. So when you think about it, it really solves our problems. And that's kind of really the purpose of technology. So one of the, one of the ways that you guys can and implement your Congressional App Challenge projects is to create an app that really solves a problem. Okay. And then, so how do we do that? So today we'll be going over the design thinking process, which is a design and brainstorming approach that helps us develop good app ideas that are designed to solve the problems that we face. So the first step of that is we empathize. So we empathize with our users. So essentially we have a group of people and we have a topic and our goal is that we want to gain a good understanding of the problems that these group of people have with the topic. So some questions to keep in mind is who are you making this for? What do these people do? What are their needs? And what are the problems and challenges they face regarding this topic? So some ways that you guys can gain insight into this is to perform some research. So you can create a survey for your target audience to complete. You can interview users to uh, really get a good understanding of their perspective, or you can look at ex existing data and existing studies that were done based on the group of people and the topic. So as an example, we'll be uh, kind of doing a little exercise based on, um, based on the empathize stage. So, so for our example, we have our target audience, which is busy people. And then we have our topic, which is hunger. 
So when someone is hungry, what do they do to satisfy their hunger? Feel free to drop your thoughts in chat. It's just a one word verb. What do you do to satisfy your hunger? Exactly, you eat. Exactly. So let's think about the process of kind of getting the food you need to eat. So how do you get the food you need to eat? What are some of the things you have to do? Yeah, you could, yeah, vending machines work, kind of snacking, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it a little bit more generally. Like, what do you do after grocery shopping and you want to create a quick meal? Yeah, you cook. Exactly. Uh huh. So some of the things that people do to uh, get the food that they want to satisfy their hunger is you could cook at home, you could go to a restaurant or you could order takeout. So what are the problems that come about satisfying their hunger? So let's go through each one. So in terms of cooking at home, what are some problems that you face? So sometimes you don't like the food that's at home. Sometimes when you cook, it takes way too long. And sometimes you don't have enough ingredients. So that requires you to make a trip to the grocery shop. It takes even more time. Okay, and then now let's do another example, except for going to a restaurant. So what kind of problems and challenges do you guys face when you go to a restaurant? Yeah, time. Yeah, sometimes the wait time for the food could take too long. Exactly, it's, it's expensive, it's not healthy, Might not. it might be out of your budget. Oh, COVID, that's a good one. Exactly, so some of the things that you guys, uh, some of the problems that come about is too expensive, takes too long, and you need to drive there, which takes too long. So uh, yeah, so think about Taga Ardian. So it's busy people. So these are kind of like problems and challenges that busy people face regarding this. Okay, so when you think about this, what kind of characteristics does your audience have? So kind of let's uh, flesh out the details a lot more. So in terms of busy people, kind of like the characteristics that they have is that they're, they don't have much time to spare and they want to get things done very quickly because they're really busy. So yeah, so kind of think about your target audience and always dig deeper into every detail and really looking into the user's needs and motivations. Oh, exactly, allergies, you can't eat certain foods. Okay, and then within busy people, you can actually, within this wide, uh, this huge group of busy people, we want to, you can also break it down into more groups. So maybe you have a subset of busy people that, all, that also care about their health. So what are kind of the problems or like char characteristics they have? So think about that they care about their diet and they exercise daily. So, you, so also take that into account when you're brainstorm, when you're empathizing with the user. And then second is where we actually define the problem. So based on our previous, based on our previous stage, what did we learn? And we want to synthesize and from there define the core problems that those users face. And from there, we can uh, create a problem statement, which uh, is break, broken down into three components, the user, the need, and the desired outcome and benefit. So for instance, this is an, an example of problem statement based on our example. So busy, hungry people, that's our, uh, that's our user, need a quick, low effort way to get dinner, that's our need, in order to satisfy their hunger and survive. And that's the desired outcome and benefit. Okay, and then from there, we can actually generate ideas that serve as solutions to the problem statements. And we want to aim as, as many ideas out there so that we can just make sure we explore all aspects. So some ideation exercises that we'll, be, we'll actually be uh, doing in our breakout rooms is we have crazy eights, method 635, where we kind of, um, where people write down their ideas and then we give our ideas to another person who will expand upon and build upon our ideas. Then we have um, then we have worst idea possible where you just come up with terrible unrealistic ideas. And then so and I, an example of kind of a, pro, uh, a solution that solves this problem statement is DoorDash. So DoorDash allows you to kind of order food, whatever kind of food you want from from this, uh, just from the top of a button. And from there, it's a really convenient solution for, biz for busy people because they can do this within five minutes. They can wait and just get their work done. And then they have their food immediately delivered to them, no cooking whatsoever. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, this, is, uh, this, this process is called the design thinking process, which is a human-centered approach into problem solving. So ultimately the app where you make is serving a user. So we want to ensure that we're always keeping them in mind throughout the entire development process, especially in the ideation stage. Hi everyone, welcome to our ideation activity. So the first step of our activity is the empathize stage 
where we're trying to get a better understanding of the users that we're building a product for. And to do this, our goal is to brainstorm any ideas, needs, and challenges that a certain group has with a certain topic at hand. So let's get started. So first, let's select a topic. So some idea topics you can explore is regarding teenagers, since you guys are all teenagers. And we can explore different topics, such as needing academic help, finding jobs, learning to drive, productivity and battling procrastination, online learning, healthy eating. So feel free to pause the video and pick any of these topics or any other topics that interest you. Now that we have selected a topic, let's really take some time to analyze and understand the, the, uh, the problems, needs, and challenges that the audience has with the topic that you selected. So some questions that you guys can think about are, how have you personally been affected by this problem since you're teenagers? Feel free to reflect on your experiences. And what do teenagers do? What are their needs? And what are their problems and challenges regarding the, the topic at hand? So feel free to pause the video and sit, take some time to analyze. Now that we have a list of problems, we can move on to step two, which is the define stage where out of all the problems that we brainstormed, our goal is to select one problem that we'd like to create a technical solution for. And from there, we can develop a problem statement for it. So for this part of the activity, I challenge you to create a problem statement based on the problem that you'd like to create a technical solution for. So as a recap, a problem statement has three components. It has an audience, a need, and a desired outcome and be or benefit. So an example of a problem statement is teenage girls, that's our audience, need to eat nutritious food, that's our need, in order to thrive, be healthy, and grow. That's our desired outcome and benefit. So feel free to craft your problem statement using this structure. Now that we have crafted our problem statement, we can move on to the third stage of our activity, which is the ideation stage. So our goal is to come up with as many technical app solutions as we can regarding solving this problem statement. So the first step to this exercise is we want to select an ideation technique to utilize. So here are some ideation techniques you guys could utilize. You can do crazy eights where you fold papers into eight squares and try to brainstorm one idea per square for every minute. You can do round robin if you're in a group where everyone writes down two ideas in two minutes. And when the two minutes are up, you can pass your paper onto the next person and they'll build off, um, off of your ideas for the next two minutes and you repeat. Some other ideation exercises is provocation or worst idea possible where you just come up with extremely radical, unrealistic, and terrible ideas. Our goal is to just come up with as many ideas as possible and make sure we're exploring all, all, uh, all solutions that we can, we can to solve the problem at hand. So feel free to pause the video and decide which ideation exercise you'd like to utilize. Hi everyone, welcome to our ideation activity. So the first step, of our activity is the empathize stage, where we're trying to get a better understanding of the users that we're building a product for. And to do this, our goal is to brainstorm any ideas, needs, and challenges that a certain group has with a certain topic at hand. So let's get started. So first, let's select a topic. So some idea topics you can explore is regarding teenagers, since you guys are all teenagers. And we can explore different topics, such as needing academic help, finding jobs, learning to drive, productivity and battling procrastination, online learning, healthy eating. So feel free to pause the video and pick any of these topics or any other topics that interest you. Now that we have selected a topic, let's really take some time to analyze and understand the 
the, uh, the problems, needs, and challenges that the audience has with the topic that you selected. So some questions that you guys can think about are, how have you personally been affected by this problem since you're teenagers? Feel free to reflect on your experiences. And what do teenagers do? What are their needs? And what are their problems and challenges regarding the, pro the topic at hand? So feel free to pause the video and take some time to analyze. Now that we have a list of problems, we can move on to step two, which is the define stage, where out of all the problems that we brainstormed, our goal is to select one problem that we'd like to create a technical solution for. And from there, we can develop a problem statement for it. So for this part of the activity, I challenge you to create a problem statement based on the problem that you'd like to create a technical solution for. So as a recap, a problem statement has three components. It has an audience, a need, and a desired outcome and be or benefit. So an example of a problem statement is teenage girls, that's our audience, need to eat nutritious food, that's our need, in order to thrive, be healthy, and grow. That's our desired outcome and benefit. So feel free to craft your problem statement using this structure. Now that we have crafted our problem statement, we can move on to the third stage of our activity which is the ideation stage. So our goal is to come up with as many technical app solutions as we can regarding solving this problem statement. So the first step to this exercise is we want to select an ideation technique to utilize. So here are some ideation techniques you guys could utilize. You can do crazy eights where you fold papers into eight squares and try to brainstorm one idea per square for every minute. You can do round robin if you're in a group where everyone writes down two ideas in two minutes. And when the two minutes are up, you can pass your paper on to the next person and they'll build off, um, off of your ideas for the next two minutes and you repeat. Some other ideation exercises is provocation or worst idea possible where you just come up with extremely radical, unrealistic and terrible ideas. Our goal is to just come up with as many ideas as possible and make sure we're exploring all all, uh, all solutions that we can, we can to solve the problem at hand. So feel free to pause the video and decide which ideation exercise you'd like to utilize. Now that we have selected an, uh, an ideation exercise, now we can actually brainstorm some technical app concepts and solutions that solve the problem statement. So feel free to go ahead and perform your ideation exercise. Now that we have brainstormed a, a, a list of ideas, I challenge you to repeat steps one and two, where you choose another ideation exercise and actually perform it. So feel free to pause the video and do so. After trying out some ideation techniques, I'm sure you might have maxed out all the ideas that you can. So if you can no longer think of any ideas, then we can move on to the next step which is out of all the ideas that we brainstorm, you should uh, select the best technical app idea to pursue. And really think about why this idea stood out to you. Feel free to pause the video and reflect and, to, and select the app idea and reflect on why you chose it. Finally, now that we have selected one app idea, I challenge you to develop this idea even more. So think about what features will this app have? What kinds, how do you kind of visualize the app? What kind of designs would it have? So feel free to flush out the, the details of this idea even more. Awesome. So that concludes our app ideation activity and we will continue on with the presentation. Now that we have selected an, uh, an ideation exercise, now we can actually brainstorm some technical app concepts and solutions that solve the problem statement. So feel free to go ahead and perform your ideation exercise. 
Now that we have brainstormed a, a, a list of ideas, I challenge you to repeat steps one and two, where you choose another ideation exercise and actually perform it. So feel free to pause the video and do so. After trying out some ideation techniques, I'm sure you might have maxed out all the ideas that you can. So if you can no longer think of any ideas, then we can move on to the next step, which is out of all the ideas that we brainstorm, you should select the best technical app idea to pursue. And really think about why this idea stood out to you. Feel free to pause the video and reflect and to and select the app idea and reflect on why you chose it. Finally, now that we have selected one app idea, I challenge you to develop this idea even more. So think about what features will this app have? What kinds, how do you kind of visualize the app? What kind of designs would it have? So feel free to flesh out the, the details of this idea even more. Awesome. So that concludes our app ideation activity and we will continue on with the presentation. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I hope you guys had some productive and interesting brainstorming sessions. Would anyone like to share um, any ideas that they came up with? I know for my group, so we decided to focus on, let's see, decided to focus on teenagers and battling procrastination. And one of our cool ideas is that we have like a, intelligent Google Calendar, um, a Google Calendar mobile app, which uses AI to kind of identify uh, the, and identify like the relevancy and prioritization of like who's contacting you. So if it's like a high priority person, like your boss or your parent, then uh, the call would go through. But if it's someone that's like not as important, then it would like silence the notification. So that's like a way for us that we could like battle distractions. Yeah, so that was what we came up with. Does anyone like to share? Okay, not a problem. Just feel free to drop in chat and then we'll continue. Let's see. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so what are our next steps? So after we kind of decide our app idea, how exactly do we make it a reality? So kind of the first step that we want to consider is that from there we want to develop a list of features and like requirements that the app will include. And some suggestions I have for your projects is that when you're kind of creating your app requirements, be sure to look at existing apps out there and look at the features they have, because that's something that you guys can also use in your apps. Try to abstract away from the details. So, so it's definitely easy to get carried away with, oh, what color should a button be or like what its size should be. So try focusing on really the core functionality of that feature besides the little small details. And then finally, be sure to prioritize features. So it can be easily, it, you can easily get carried away with building so many features. So prioritize the core features you want in your app since we do have a deadline for the challenge. And this is, a, this is an example of a list of requirements. So as you can see, this is kind of a meal uh, calorie tracking app. And at the right over here is the list of requirements. And then at the left kind of translates those requirements into designs. Okay, next is we want to focus on developing the user interface and the user experience of the app. And some uh, tools I suggest you guys should use is Figma and Adobe XD. And as you can see, this is Figma. So what's really cool about Figma is that if you are uh, creating in a team, then, all of, then you can actually collaborate with the team on the document when you're uh, building these prototypes. So that's just a very convenient features. Yeah, and Figma just allows you to create these uh, app screens very easily. You can add in different components, add in different pictures. And uh, it's overall a tool that I really recommend. And then uh, when you develop things, just be sure that it also shows the layout of how your app will work. So if you click on this button, where will it take you to? And then third is uh, where we actually develop the app. So be sure to select a language that you want to program your app in. And if it's your first time coding, there is a Congressional App Challenge Toolkit that you guys can look for resources on how to code. And uh, on uh, the Alumni Advisory Board side, we're also going to be offering future workshops that will teach technical skills, so stay tuned for that. Finally, after you created your app, I definitely recommend for you guys to test so the app can be the best as uh, it can be when you guys submit. So be sure to invite your family and friends or just a small group of people to test your app. And from there, you can get uh, general improvements and feedback. And from there, you can uh, yeah, iterate on your, you can make those improvements and then your app is ready to go. 
to submit to the Congressional App Challenge. So again, the deadline is November 1st of this year. And I wanna emphasize that after November 1st, I encourage you guys to uh, actually continue with your projects, actually try releasing it to the general public or your target audience. Because uh, I know when you're creating an app, you're putting so many hours, so much effort, and it definitely deserves to be, uh, to be recognized and be, to, to be used by other people. And the app that you guys actually build, if it does solve a problem, then if you share it with those group of people that uh, need those problems solved, then it'll actually make it like a personal and direct impact on them. So I definitely encourage you guys to kind of, um, to kind of extend your project after the Congressional App Challenge. And overall, that is our workshop. So we have a feedback form that I would like for you guys to fill out because we will be holding more workshops in the future. So, uh, so this will help us get a good idea of what you guys are looking for and how we can improve our workshop. And uh, yeah, so I dropped the link in chat, so feel free to fill out the feedback form. And then we have some future events coming up. We have our Apple webinar coming up next week and Apple will uh, share details about their app design workbook and talk all about Swift. <laughs> And then we have uh, office hours coming that the alumni advisory board will be holding. So feel free to come and join us if you guys want uh, feedback on pitching your app idea or need help troubleshooting some type of feature on your app, we're, we're there to help. And then finally, I have a resource, uh, resource page that you guys can uh, check out uh, while, you're, uh, while you're building your Congressional App Challenge projects. Awesome. And with that said, I hope you guys learned a lot and have a lot more direction in terms of developing your congressional app challenge project. And yeah, thank you for joining us. And I will drop this, the slides in chat so you guys can save that. And that is it for our workshop. Thank you so much, everyone. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. And what's the selection criteria for the winning application? Is it technology or? value to the society or creativity, what are you looking for? Yeah, I'll go ahead and answer that. Uh, so every member of Congress um, has the opportunity to um, select their own grading rubric or create their own grading rubric for apps. And so it does vary from district to district. We'd encourage you to check in with your member of Congress to ask what they're looking for in their specific applications this year. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, you can always feel free to get in touch with our team. Um, you can reach us uh, at um, student support at congressionalappchallenge.us or find our contact info through our website. Uh, Natalia, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to build this amazing workshop and um, leading it today. It's really been uh, a wonderful opportunity to um, uh, get the alumni advisory board involved in this process. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you guys to future webinars, including future alumni advisory board webinars. Keep your eyes peeled for those and make sure to sign up for the Congressional App Challenge uh, before November 1st and get your applications in by then. Thank you guys all very much. Have a great evening and we'll see you soon.